Jerry of the Circus. Jerry of the circus. Hey, Uncle Dan. <laughs> Uncle Dan. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. What is it, Jerry? Uh, where are you going? Right in here in the office wagon. See Mr. Randall. About me, huh? How did you know? Bumps told me. Oh. Hey, what do you want to talk to Mr. Randall about me for? Oh, just a little business, Jerry. About my property in Montana? Nope. Oh, and what? You'll find out later. Oh, tell me now. Let me talk with Mr. Randall first, then we'll let you in on it later. Oh, I don't see why you won't tell me. What's the secret about? Now, Jerry. Well. Where were you heading for? Right over there to the ticket wagon. Jack Hastings has those pictures finished, and he's going to give me a set. What pictures? The pictures he took of me up on El Mundo. Oh. Well, you run along and get them. You'll find out soon enough what I'm going to discuss with Mr. Randall. Oh, all right. Come on, Rags. <laughs> <laughs> Smile a little bit, Jerry. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Come in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, what's so funny, Dan? That boy, Mr. Randall. Oh, who? Jerry. Oh, what's he done now? Uh, he's all put out because I won't tell him what I wanted to see you about. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess you can't blame him. He's in on about everything that happens around here. Yeah, that's right. Well... What did you want to talk to me about, Dan? Uh, let me pull this chair up here. And... You've got a little time, haven't you? Oh, sure, sure thing. What's in your mind? I guess you've heard I'm about set. Mm-hmm. I heard you got another order for animals, and looks like you'll be putting out to Africa pretty soon. That's it. I figure to get away within a couple of months, maybe sooner. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Dan. Thanks. But uh, what about this talk you want to have with me in regard to Jerry? Well, I've been thinking, Mr. Randall... I'm the only relative Jerry has. Yeah? This expedition I'm going on may take me as far south as the Veldt. Mm. Well, that's way down in South Africa. Right. And I thought that Jerry should have someone to sort of look out after him. And uh, I'm an uncle, and he isn't much good thousands of miles away and out of communication with the world for months at a time. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. You never know just what might come up. As far as that goes, this big game hunting is a dangerous business, and there's no telling what might happen to me. Mm-hmm. That's right, but... Uh... Uh, well, what's your point? Well, I think he should have a guardian. Well, if it's not asking too much, Mr. Randall, I think you're the man for the job. Asking too much? Why, say, you you know how much I think of Jerry. Why, if that boy were my own son, I, I couldn't care for him any more than I do. It would be an honor, Dan. I'm glad to hear you say that, Mr. Randall. Uh, you know, Dan, I've been thinking quite a bit about Jerry's welfare and his future. He's going to amount to something someday, you mark my words. Oh, I'm sure of that, all right. But... I don't think he's getting the proper training being with a circus. He's, well, he's missing a lot of things a boy of his age should have. I know. The boy should really have a home. But I haven't got a home, so I can't do anything about that, much as I'd like to. Well, have you ever thought of sending him to a good school? No, I, I haven't, Mr. Randall. Well, I have, Dan. I've given it a lot of thought. In fact, I sent to several schools for catalogs and literature. Let's see, uh, yeah, it was last week. I should get them here or at the latest our next stand tomorrow. You have been thinking about Jerry. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about a good school for Jerry? 
I think it's a great idea. Well, uh, how about a good military school? It would be the best thing in the world for him. I'm glad you feel that way. But what about the money for the tuition? Oh, we'll work that out somehow. It takes quite a bit of money to send a boy to a good school. Well, you, you let me worry about that. Okay. And I'll let you pick out the school, too. I don't know a thing about those things. All right, fine. Now, uh, what about this guardianship? Well, as long as I'm his only relative, and likewise his guardian, and I'm willing to have his guardianship transferred to you, there shouldn't be any trouble at all. Good. Well, then suppose we do it the first thing in the morning when we get into Winkler. Fine. I'll meet you here at the office right after breakfast. All right. Jerry, this way. <laughs> Sounds like Jerry now. Yeah, that's him, all right. Yeah. Uh, come in, Jerry. Hey, look at these keen pictures of me on El Mundo. Let's see them. Oh, say, those are good pictures. Here, Dan. Hey, look at that one, where I'm hanging onto this uh, trunk. Oh, this is a good one, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's a dandy, too. This one where you're standing up on his head. Say, they're all good. Did Jack give you these? Uh-huh, for keeps. Oh, uh, that's all right. Well, here you are. You hang on to them now. Uh, don't you worry, I will. Well, I guess that's about all we have to say, Mr. Randall. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, Dan. And I'll see you after a while, Jerry. All right. Uh... Say, uh, did you have your talk about me, Mr. Randall? <laughs> yes, we did, Jerry, and you're pretty anxious to find out what we were talking about, aren't you? Sure I am, but, well, can you blame me? Oh, no, no, I guess we can't blame you, Jerry, and I'm going to let you in on it. Oh, swell. How would you like me for a dad? Uh, what? I said, how would you like me for a dad? Oh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> well, not exactly a dad, Jerry, but, uh... Your Uncle Dan and I have decided that you've got to have a guardian, especially now that your uncle is going out on a long expedition. And you're going to be my guardian? Yep. How'd you like that? Oh, that's keen. I would have picked you myself. <laughs> Fine. I'm glad you're satisfied. Hey, when do you start? <laughs> well, I start my new job tomorrow, Jerry. Yes, sir, tomorrow you'll have to answer to me for everything. I'm awful glad, Mr. Randall. I wouldn't want anybody else in the whole world for a guardian. Well, yeah, we do get along pretty good at that, don't we? Well, I'll say we do. Uh, are you going to continue to listen to me and do as I say? Sure, whatever you think is best for me. Well, if you think it's the right thing, then I'm sure it is. That's a way to talk to you. <laughs> oh, uh, yes? Mr. Randall? Yes, yes, come in. I'm Mr. Wells, Mr. Randall, local representative of the Montana Overland Railroad. Oh, come in. Glad to know you, Mr. Wells. Uh, have a chair. Thank you. Hi, Greg. I, uh, I take it you're looking for Jerry Dugan, Mr. Wells. That's right. Well, here's your man right here. Jerry, meet Mr. Wells. How do you do, sir? I'm glad to know you, Jerry. Although I did expect to meet someone a little older. <laughs> well, you'll find Jerry a good little businessman. Well, in that case, I'll have to be careful. I received a long-distance phone call just a while ago, right after our Mr. McNear got your wire and the information about your route. Mm, uh, seems to me your company is mighty anxious about this property of Jerry's. <laughs> That's why I'll have to be careful. You know that we're anxious, and you might hold out for a pretty steep price. <laughs> then you want to buy my property? That's why I'm here, young man. Well, uh, what do you want it for? Well, let's start right at the beginning, Jerry. Okay. The M.O. Railroad is extending a spur line to link with our main road at a junction not far from your property. And we need your land to run the extension through. Oh, I guess I'll have to admit, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, now, Jerry, and after me telling Mr. Wells you were a good businessman. Well, I can't help it. I, I just don't understand. In other words, Jerry... We want to run some new track right through your property. We've been wanting to do this for a long time, Mr. Randall. We had a hard time finding the owner of the land. Oh, is that so? All the county recorder's office showed was that it was owned by a Timothy Dugan. Well, how did you finally find us? Someone with our firm found out that Timothy Dugan was a circus man. And so the office got busy and sent out letters to every circus. Well, that's almost as good as your detective work, Jerry. <laughs> I'll say. Now, young man, what are you going to ask for the property? Well, I don't know. I don't know what it's worth. The actual worth, as recorded in the county assessor's office, is about $2,000. Is that all? Yep. It's out in the wide open spaces, Jerry. 35 miles to the nearest town. Uh, well, why don't you make Jerry an offer, uh, Mr. Wells? All right, I will. The Montana Overland authorized me to offer $5,000. Not because the property is worth that much, mind you, but it's worth that much to us because of the shortcut. Hmm. Well, how does that sound to you, Jerry? Well, I don't know... You know, I, I haven't seen the land yet, and, well, it might have gold on it or silver. Or, well, it might be worth a whole lot more than that. No, Jerry. The property has all been carefully gone over by a geologist, and it has no value in that regard. Well, anyway, I think it's worth more than $5,000. How about 6000 
No, I'd rather keep That's it. three times as much as it's worth. <laughs> now Jerry's showing his business ability. Hmm? You are hard to deal with, young man. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems to me, Jerry, that that's a pretty fair offer. If they build their track someplace else, it might be a long time before you get another chance to sell. I know, but... All right, Jerry. I'll give you my final bid. I'll go as high as the railroad will allow me. I'll give you 7500 Is it a deal? Well... Do you want a day to think it over? No. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Randall? Oh, I, I don't want to advise you in this, Jerry. It's up to you. It's really not any good to me. I mean, the property. There's taxes to be paid on it every year. You mustn't forget that. What do you say, Rag? <coughs> you mean sell it? <coughs> okay, I will. You can have it for $8,000. <laughs> i am sorry, Jerry. 7500 is the best I can do. Well... All right. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, you you drove a hard bargain, Jerry. I'll say you did. <laughs> now, um, who's your legal guardian, Jerry? Well, I don't know. I guess my uncle. That's right, yes. yes. His uncle is today, but uh, tomorrow we're taking out the papers that will make me his guardian. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to make out some papers too, Jerry. We'll have to get your uncle to sign them along with your signature. Have you got the deed to the property? Uh-huh. It's in Bump's wagon, uh, over in the trunk. And where will we find your uncle? Well, he'll uh, he'll most likely be out in the backyard someplace. You'll find him when you get back to the wagon. I have a company check right here now. I'll just fill it out for you. Then we'll draw up these transfer papers and we'll be all set. Mm. Well, that's certainly a lot of money for a boy like you to have, Jerry. Mm, I'll say it is. I wish I had a nest egg like that when I was a boy. I worked mighty hard for every penny I had. Mm, yeah, and that goes for me, too. Well, <laughs> I'm going to work hard, too, you don't think I'm satisfied just because I got this money, do you? Oh, well, that's the spirit, Jerry. You ready now, Jerry? You mean to go back and find Uncle Dan? Yes. Sure. Uh, come on, Randy. <laughs> well, Mr. Randall, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to have made your acquaintance. <laughs> we'll see you tonight, Mr. Randall. Oh, okay, Jerry. Goodbye, Mr. Wells. Goodbye, Mr. Randall. Jerry. Yes, sir. Uh, say, uh, don't cash that check and uh, spend it before you see me. Well, why? <laughs> well, because I've got an idea where you're going to spend part of it. If you don't see me on the train tonight, you uh, be sure to come to my office wagon after we're set up at Winkler in the morning. <laughs>